Before we get into today's story, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Most people are familiar with one of cinema's highest grossing film series of all time. Pirates of the Caribbean. Most are also familiar with the franchise's main character and poster child played by Johnny Depp Captain Jack Sparrow. Though the movies are a whimsical representation of the day-to-day -day adventures of a genre of history's most awe-inspiring criminals, a far fewer segment of the population has been made aware of the fact that the character of Captain Jack Sparrow was based on the life of an actual English pirate active in the mid-16th or 17th century around the Mediterranean, whose actual name was Jack Ward. Said to have been born impoverished around 1553 Ward began his life as a shell of the anti-hero he would transform himself into frankly, he was a depressed alcoholic who made what little money he could salvage together fishing in southeast England. His future began amidst the popularization of privatized pirating, which was gaining traction as a mostly legal endeavor upon Queen Elizabeth the first issuing of licenses to any person willing to overtake Spanish ships, the enemy country of the English at this time, these private licenses were described to have worked in the following fashion quote, the crown received 5% of the loot, and the Lord Admiral's agents took 10% the rest was divided between the ship's owner and the crew. The award isn't documented to have had any specific success during his career as a privatized pirate on behalf of the English royalty. It is noted that the skills he would later hone in becoming a legend in his field are first adopted at this point in his life. That is until James's VI overtook the throne and banned all forms of private pirate and adapted to the lifestyle and not wanting to return to his days of fishing. Ward complained to a friend that he missed, quote, the days when they might sing, swear, drink poor and kill men as freely as your cake makers do flies. He missed when the whole world was his empire, or he could rob at will. Something about his own musings must have struck a chord within Word. Because shortly after this conversation, he decided to gather a group of about 30 men to capitalize upon an opportunity he had been made aware of, or had been told the ship of a Catholic merchant en route from England to France was docked near where he was staying. He and his men stormed the ship that night and sought escape in the English Channel. Word and his men were now legally distinguished as pirates as opposed to the privateer label they have under license and the previous English regime. Unfortunately, the ship had nothing valuable on board. So upon arrival near the Isles of Sicily, ordain his men seize the second ship, this time, the score was massive. After his first major successes, a pirate John Ward went back to England to regroup, he gathered a large crew of men and headed out to the Mediterranean near trading routes to rob rich merchants in transit. His plan was very successful, and his crew took to profitable ships almost immediately upon arrival, he continued to add men to his crew and make connections with like-minded pirates in the area. Eventually, Warden is now vast told men want to Tunis, where their fortunes would be forever changed. Though the political scene in Tunis was a bit muddled at the time that John Ward arrived. The most powerful man in the region by far was a man by the name of Youth Monday, the leader of the largest legion of soldiers in the area who were known to wreak havoc on any shipping vessels that aired them. It is unlikely that Ward was welcomed to Tunis by day however, by this point, his tendency for violence and his vast pseudo-army was enough to get him permission to take over the piracy in Tunis, so long as Day and his men were cut in on the profit. By this time, ordered during the nickname Sparrow, the origin of Johnny Depp's character's name in the loose adaptation that were gone made about John Ward's life, or to develop reputation for being flamboyant and stylish, and after becoming unquantifiably rich off his pirating operation, he sought to build a mansion to reflect this, his home and land were described as being more fit for prince than a pirate. Ward's men were fiercely loyal, and his house was staffed to cooks and a taste tester. Despite his tendency, though for the finer things in life, that never put a hindrance upon Ward's skill as a pirate nor his courage as a leader, as was proven in the battle that would define his legacy as a marauder. In the capture of their Inarawa Serena, an estimated 1,500-ton vessel laden with silks, indigo, and cotton are some, some of the most valuable resources of the time. The crux of this victory lies in the fact that the ship was too large to maneuver itself as board and his men attacked, essentially making it a sitting duck for the pirates to bombard. After a three-hour attack, Ward's men began to board their victim ship, the crew of the Renewer Aside Arena fought back and are said to have destroyed the bodies of at least two of Ward's men in this. They sought entry. At this point, they see a pushback like they hadn't experienced before, or its crew began to panic, whereupon Board jumped ahead of his men, and is stated to have, quote, boarded the ship, subdued her and changed her men like slaves. 
Unfortunately, the structural damage done to the Red Arrow Assad Arena would cause it to crack and a later storm, killing 350 of Ward's men, and nearly drowning John Ward himself who's able to escape on a separate vessel. Unfortunately, this incident and John Ward's survival amidst a tragedy that left many families in Tunis with lost relatives, damaged his reputation and put a hindrance upon his ability to continue his pirating operation. He became heavily dependent on Youth Monday for financial support, potentially in an effort to integrate with the local population. John Ward and whoever was left in his crew made the decision to convert to Islam, or change his name to use a phrase and despite having a wife in England married for a second time. Despite this new aspect of his life, the man who had previously went by John Ward was noted to have developed into a shell of his former self, converting back to alcoholism, going bald weakness presents, and speaking very little, although his life from that point on was documented fairly limitedly the legend he acquired during his pirating days grew far beyond his intentions, as pamphlets, books, and plays began to develop with Board is the subject of discussion. One of the more popular rendition of John Moore's life put out at this time, was entitled Captain Ward and the Rainbow, in which the King of England sends a ship called the Royal Rainbow after the pirate board escapes, capturing the play. And he goes out with the final line of quote, Go tell the King of England, go tell him this for me. If he ran king of all land, or reign king at sea. Living and dying as England's most notorious pirate and arguably the most famous in history, Captain John Ward fought to claim the title and died with the legacy of King of the Sea.